when you think about the issue of inflation and as it pertains to food prices, farms across America, how are you navigating it? Well, first of all, is to understand in terms of food inflation, there's a significant difference between what people are paying at the grocery store concerning, uh, in relationship to what they're paying at restaurants. I think what you'll find is if you go deeper into those numbers that the, uh, the opportunities at grocery stores are improving significantly, but it is at restaurants where we're seeing still uh, a bit of high inflation. Uh, so you have to distinguish between that, uh, number one. Number two, uh, it is true that commodity prices have come down, but understand that farmers only get anywhere from 15 to 20 cents or so uh, for every food dollar that's spent at the grocery store. So commodity prices don't have as much of an impact on uh, food prices as you might think. Uh, the uh, issue with avian influenza, clearly a, a, a component of egg price increase. Uh, well, the good news is uh, we're not seeing anywhere near the level of uh, HBAI that we saw uh, it, last year. Uh, the bad news is that we still continue to grapple with it. If not inflation, what is the biggest challenge faced by rural America today? I think the biggest challenge uh, long term is the loss of farms and farmland. Uh, since 1981, uh, we've seen a loss of 477,970 farms in America. That's the entire equivalent of farms in North Dakota, South Dakota, Michigan, uh, or excuse me, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, Missouri, and Oklahoma. Uh, 151 million acres of land that was in farming that's no longer in farming. And it's more and more difficult for small and mid-sized farming operations uh, to stay in the business. And that's why the Biden administration is focused on creating new revenue streams, new ways of farmers, in addition to selling commodities, can make a living. Uh, and we're excited about the opportunity that that now presents for our farmers to be entrepreneurial. Uh, but obviously, it's going to take some time for, uh, for those opportunities to, uh, to sort of filter down into the countryside. But we're excited about where it's headed. How do you see about the face of farming changing in this country? If you think about it, farmers expected to plant almost 5 million less acres of corn in the United States while soybean is expected to increase. Do you see corn losing its status as the king of crops in America? How do things change moving forward? Not necessarily, but I think what you're going to see are new uses for, those cor for corn and soybeans sustainable aviation fuel being one of those opportunities. I think you're going to see agricultural waste become its own commodity instead of being overapplied on land that causes some serious issues with water quality. We're now going to be converting that into a brand new series of bio-based products, which creates a whole new industry, whole new opportunity for processing and manufacturing in rural places. We're going to see uh, farmers basically be energy producers. Uh, we're seeing a, a significant move to renewable energy on the farm, not only to reduce the cost of, of uh, electricity for the farming operation, but to produce electricity for their friends and neighbors. You're going to see a significant transition. And finally, you're going to see a move away from just relying on commodity markets to more local and regional food markets, where the farmer doesn't get 20 cents of every food dollar, but gets 50 to 75 cents of every food dollar. As you think about the changes ahead, it begs the question about what comes out of Congress. Will we see a farm bill out of Congress this year? And would it come before or after the election? Well, I continue to be optimistic that we can get to yes in terms of a farm bill. Obviously, there's some serious issues in terms of how you pay for it. Uh, I think it's fair to say we're not going to pay for it through uh, reductions in our commitment to nutrition or our commitment to uh, conservation. Uh, having said that, it's not just the farm bill that is important. The budget is important. We're certainly happy that we now have a budget and hope that we don't face a, a serious uh, a situation with, with shutdowns in the future. We have to have uh, the flexibility to use tools like the Commodity Credit Corporation, which are helping get, uh, get us through a number of disasters that we faced. And we also have to have that conservation money under the Inflation Reduction Act. If you take all four of those tools working in concert, we can create, I think, a better opportunity for farms across America. There's the farm bill, but there's also just a host of issues that farmers have been facing across the issue. Agriculture also being a key battleground when you think about the election coming up just in a number of months here. They have soaring costs, bureaucracy, European Union regulations in the Green Deal. There's a whole host of things here. How do you think the farming community is going to influence the next election cycle? Well, I can't really answer a question uh, about politics on, on this interview. But what I will say is that uh, American agriculture is offering an option or, an, or a different approach uh, to climate-smart agriculture. 
uh, Europe uh, has seen its way to es essentially create a regulatory system which farmers are resisting in Europe. Here in the United States, it's not a regulatory system. It's really a market-based voluntary system. Our Climate Smart Agriculture activities now involving 136 projects across America, over 102 commodities involved, 203 practices being incented, uh, new market opportunities being created. So it's a voluntary market-driven incentive basis, uh, based system, which is much more popular and much more doable. So I think there is a contrast between how we're approaching uh, the challenges of the future and how our friends in Europe are. Given that agriculture is a key battleground, regardless of whether you could talk about the politics behind it or not, how much pressure do you feel to appease this community or at least meet them on their needs through the rest of this year? What exactly is being done? The pressure I feel is in the loss of farms. Knowing that 577,970 families had to sit around a coffee table and acknowledge that they just couldn't make it work. Uh, I know about farmers, they want to farm and they want to pass it on to the next generation. When that doesn't happen, it really impacts and affects the mental health of those individuals as well. So that's what keeps me up at night. Uh, and that's why I'm excited about the opportunities that this administration is providing for farmers to be entrepreneurial, to create more revenue streams so that they have that opportunity to sit at that coffee table and say, we can make a go of it. And son or daughter or grandchild, you can come back and you can farm. You can do what we love to do. We started this conversation talking about inflation, price pressures that farmers and consumers are facing. You, you talked about the margins a little bit here. You also talked about the idea that prices are getting a little bit better. They were lowering. How much concern do you have about a reacceleration of inflation in, in any regard, and are you doing anything to protect against it? Well, we are helping to lower the costs on the farm by encouraging farmers to embrace renewable energy through the Renewable Energy for America program. Over 6,000 grants uh, already been issued by this administration to help farmers uh, reduce their cost of, of power. We're, we're working on the fertilizer issue. We've uh, already funded 42 projects uh, that will reduce the, the need for uh, foreign fertilizer, uh, re reduce the opportunities for the use of fertilizer, make a more efficient use of it. So we are helping farmers to lower costs. At the same time, as I said, we're creating new revenue streams for those farmers. Uh, as is the case with average uh, Americans, we're seeing wages up. While we want to control inflation, we also want to make sure that, far uh, that workers, farmers have sufficient income to be able to support their families. And this is the president's theory of a, of a bottom up and middle out economy. Uh, and I think with the job growth and wages going up, uh, I think we're beginning to see the benefits of that.